much for the introduction. So my name is uh, Gorka Sancho. I'm a professor here at the College of Charleston, and I'm also the Marine Biology Advisor. Um, College of Charleston is in South Carolina, and um, we are a marine biology program, meaning that we're a biology program that offers a specialty in marine biology, a little bit different from marine sciences that you might found, find in other places. But let me introduce you a little bit to our school, our college, and our students. There we go. So College of Charleston is a South Carolina public liberal arts and sciences university. What do I mean by that? Um, this means that uh, we're a public school. We are supported by the state of South Carolina. Uh, we have a medium size, about 10,000 undergraduate students. I will say that we also have a graduate program, but only at the master's level, and it's less than 1,000 students. So our main focus are in undergraduate students. We are liberal arts and sciences, meaning we do um, focus on the liberal arts model. We think that students should learn how to think, how to write, and how to act in public on top of just getting information on specific subjects. And we also have sciences universities. We actually have a very strong focus on sciences, and the School of Science and Mathematics is the largest school in the, in the whole College of Charleston. We have a split, about 54% of the students come from South Carolina, and about 36% of the total students are from out of state. This proportion is a little bit different, and when it comes down to marine biology, it's about 50-50%, 50, 50, 50 South Carolinians and 50 out-of-staters. Our tuition is relatively affordable. Uh, it's $13,000 for in-state and $33,000 for out-of-state, which might sound a lot, but we actually do provide a lot of scholarships and financial aid specifically to out-of-state students that are in need. We are presently represented by 48 states. We have students from 48 states in the United States, and we have foreign students from a total of 56 countries. Um, in the past, some years, we've had 49 states, and I always ran the joke that if you happen to be from them 50th state, you'll probably get a complete free ride at the College of Charleston so they can make that a work. Our acceptance rate is actually pretty good, 80%. Um, this doesn't sound that competitive, but we do uh, get a lot of applications from students that eventually do not come here. So the reason why students want to come to College of Charleston is they're various, but one of them is that we're located in Charleston, South Carolina, which is one of the fastest growing cities in all of the United States. And Charleston is booming. We have a ton of companies Moving into Charleston, uh, Boeing, Thorne, Google, Mercedes, Volvo, Bachbaud, Bosch, et cetera. We have a lot of federal agencies that have been here from a lot of military, the Naval Information Warfare Center to large NOAA centers, where the main location for the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, et cetera. And a lot of computing companies are moving away from uh, Central Valley in California and coming down here to Charleston. We are definitely a lot more affordable than New England and the expensive parts in California. And we are ranked number one as the most tourist city in the United States. Um, so it's a great place to be a young person here and take advantage of all these incredible opportunities available. Now, the Department of Biology within the College of Charleston, we are one of the largest departments in the college. Uh, we have a total of 36 full-time faculty with PhDs. Uh, we have a slightly over a thousand majors. They're divided into about 750 just biology majors and about 260 marine biology majors. Um, we have about 4.4, at least this last year, $4.4 million in research funding within the department. We published about 50 peer-reviewed publications per year. And any year we ran about 130 independent projects or internships by undergraduate students. Um, that's one of the things that we pride ourselves is providing lots of opportunities for undergraduates to pursue independent research projects in biology and marine biology. And down here is the website where you can get a lot more detailed information about all these steps. So 
a little tour of the biology department of where we are and who we are. Uh, this is the main building of the biology department which housed in the downtown campus. It's called the Rita Science Building. It was completed two years ago and it's a brand new building in the heart of campus. Uh, state-of-the-art labs, uh, great classrooms, and spiffy design. We have a total of 18 advanced teaching labs, and we have about 27 student faculty research labs in the building. We share these buildings with the Department of Physics, but we take over the first and second floor almost completely. Secondly, we also do a lot of teaching, and a lot of marine biology students spend time in the science and mathematics building, which is nearby. This is the place that houses the departments of geology, environmental geosciences, chemistry, and biochemistry. And it's also a brand new building, um, which also houses the March Brown uh, Department, of, uh, sorry, Museum of Natural History, which is a great um, paleontological museum, which includes mostly uh, marine mammals and a lot of uh, prehistoric fishes. Because at Charleston, we also have a very unique thing. We are in a city, but we also have just a 35 minute drive, the Stone of Preserve, which is a 1000 acre preserve, mostly Southeastern estuary and um, forest lands in which we have two field labs, which are available for classes and students to do research. This is, for example, the place where we have a student run uh, gardening uh, area and it's a place where a lot of the classes use for field trips but also we use for doing uh research um, in a booming and expanding city having this sort of oasis is very unique for an urban uh, campus and it's really helpful for those of us that teach field-based uh, classes now downtown is where our main campus is i'll come back to it down here, this is a Charleston Peninsula, where all the tourists flock to see all the historical buildings. Over here, we have the beaches, Isle of Palms, Sullivan's Island, Morris Island, and further down here, Folly Beach. And right at the mouth of Charleston Harbor, right over here is where we have the Grice Marine Laboratory at Fort Johnson. This is where some of us, this is where I'm lecturing today, they have our offices, teaching labs, and research labs for the marine biology students. It's only a 15 minute drive from downtown campus. And when you come here, we have research teaching labs. We have a wet lab, mostly driven for undergraduate research projects. We have a flotilla of small boats to get access to local waters. And our location right on the harbor and marsh provide incredible access to both water and estuarine habitats around the Grice Marine. This is the place where marine biology students come to take most of the marine biology classes. Um, here are some pictures of some of my student field trips. I teach fish biology a lot. So these are a couple of students showing what we can catch with a little seine net right behind the lab. Mycology class uh, studies all the algae over there. A lot of our marine ecology classes study the oyster reefs around there. And you can see in the picture down here, this is where the Grice Marine Lab is located right on the water, this being the harbor. And over here, we have a beach habitat. We have some uh, intertidal habitat and great pristine marsh habitat right behind. Now, the Grice Marine Lab is located at the Fort Johnson uh, location. This happens to be of great uh, historical significance. This is where the um, Success in the Civil War in the 1800s was started, but it's also the host of other marine science institutions. So all the buildings that you see over here and the boats over here belong to the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. This is the main um, fisheries agency in the state of South Carolina and a place where a lot of our undergrads do internships, get to go sampling with them, and many of the marine biologists that want to stay living in Charleston after they graduate find jobs. Over here to the right, we have a new building. This is the Hollings Marine Lab, which is a shared uh, high-tech building 
shared by some College of Charleston faculty, some South Carolina Department of Natural Resources scientists, but then mostly by National Oceanic Atmospheric and Administration scientists, the feds, and the National Institute for Science Standards. This is a, a top of the line, uh, high research environment, which some of our undergrad students also have access to do independent projects. There. But this basically creates a community of marine scientists all located around the same area with a lot of interactions, lots of seminars, and a lot of opportunities to people to do internships and work. Now, we are in South Carolina, in coastal South Carolina, and we have great coastal and estuarine environments um, all the time, but um, this is not the main reason why you all come to college, even though this is great, we'll say there's also the downsides. Uh, it can be buggy and at times, and when the sun thunderstorms roll in and you're caught there, you better have good rain gear because you'll get completely soaking wet. But um, you might argue like, well, if I go to College of Charleston, I want to spend all my time there. How can I get there? If I'm, not, I'm coming from out of state and I don't have a car, no problem. We actually do are running a shuttle back and forth uh, constantly between the downtown campus and the Marine Lab. It's only a 15 minute drive anyhow. And if you have your own car, you can do it. But the shuttle makes it uh, very convenient to come and do independent research, take a class or do an internship at the Marine Lab while taking and living downtown. So what happens when you take the shuttle downtown? Well, then you go to our downtown campus. Um, downtown campus has been voted many times um, the most beautiful college campus in the United States. We're always fighting with a couple of liberal arts institutions up in New England, but it's an historical building, a uh, historical set of buildings. Um, we date uh, the college is the sixth oldest uh, college in the United States starting in the late uh, early 1700s this is a main building randolph hall and the main campus of college of chelson this is a picture of the peninsula you can see it located right there this collection of high buildings uh, we're very green campus surrounded by very lush um plants etc and it's very historical and very pretty this is where college of chelson students live and spend 95 percent of their time the marine biology students come up to the marine lab to work and take classes and do research, but most of the time you're spending it in a booming, fun downtown campus. Now, um, the classes that you were to take at College of Charleston, if you were to come here, uh, we offer our Bachelor in Science in Marine Biology, and it's, uh, we just revamped our whole curriculum uh, three years ago and modernized it, and we're actually really, really excited. It's a challenging major. Um, basically, if you were to come here, you are supposed to take some intro biology classes, biology 111 and 112 with their labs. Uh, I will say that because we do not have PhD students, all our classes are taught by faculty. Uh, no graduate students will be teaching any of your classes. The only exception that we have for graduate students uh, teaching undergrads is for the, uh, we ask for their help to teach the introduction biology laboratories and just a matter of complete uh, working power. But all the other classes and laboratories will be always taught by faculty. Um, after taking the intro bios, you will take biology 213, a marine biodiversity ecology and conservation biology course. And from there on, you'll be open to take upper level biology courses. We do require that all marine biology students take genetics and oceanography. We require them that they at least take one of these three organismal courses, biology of fishes, biology of invertebrates, or mycology, the study of algae. And then beyond that, they're supposed to take 18 additional biology credits at the 300 level of above. Uh, at least two of them must include lab courses. And at least nine of those credits must be marine biology, must be marine classes. Uh, we offer many more, but at least nine have to be marine biology. On top of that, we do require that you take the general slew that biology majors have to take, oh, uh, general science classes, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, calculus, statistics, et cetera. Now, which upper level classes can you take? Can you choose from? Well, we, because we are a very large department with about a thousand majors combining marine biology and biology, we offer a huge slew of different options of upper level biology classes. 
I've sort of highlighted the ones that are in blue are considered officially marine classes. But um, we do also have a lot of call it hidden marine classes in the sense that over half of the faculty of the marine bio in the biology department at the College of Charleston are marine biologists. Um, because we're right on the water, we attracted a lot of people that specialize in studying marine organisms. So for example, our parasitology course is taught by a world-class fish parasitologist that works almost exclusively with marine fishes. Our general and comparative physiology class is taught by a fish physiologist that specializes working in Antarctic ice fishes and now working with a lot of local fishes, also marine biology. So a lot of our normal non-marine classes are taught by marine biology, marine biologists. But um, you could take marine biology, mycology, the study of algae, the study of algae, biology of fishes, mostly uh, marine, invertebrate zoology, marine tetrapod biology, which is a fancy way of uh, mentioning sea turtles, seabirds, and marine mammals. And then uh, you can take oceanography. And then we have a whole bunch of upper level marine courses like ocean resources and conservation, marine conservation genetics, fishery science, biology of coral reefs, oceanographical research, and again, many other general biology courses that will basically make a marine biology ma uh, major a much rounded biologist in general. I also want to point out down here, these classes with an aster with a little star. These are classes that provide undergraduate students with research opportunities or independent studies. They're called internship, research experience, tutorials, problems in biology, problems in marine biology, and bachelor's essays. It's a way of getting credit for either working with somebody in town, a company, et cetera, or for working and doing independent research at one of our laboratories. For those of you in marine biology that are interested in going further on into graduate school, either to get a master's degree or to get a PhD in marine biology, marine sciences, having undergraduate research experience is, has become almost re a requirement. So we really pride in offering a lot of these opportunities. And these opportunities in many occasions are not just having uh, a little experience washing dishes or anything like that. We provide real research opportunities to many of our students. So for example, these are uh, a few examples of publications that were done led by an undergraduate student. Bailey Fallon on top here worked with Chris Freeman on looking at plastic and sponges. She traveled down to Panama to Bocas del Toro, sample sponges, and was the first person to basically describe how many microplastics are being stuck in plants. She's now, she graduated a couple of years ago, in the middle of COVID, and she's now working as a technician at the Marine Biological Labs in Wuxol. Over here, we have Brianna Ingram. Brie Ingram graduated two years ago. She worked on microplastics in uh, fishes in Charleston Harbor. And she's now uh, halfway through her master's degree at University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Over here, we have Kelsey Yetzko. She worked in my lab uh, looking at the swimming performance of estuarine fishes and using a fish flume. They're basically the equivalent of a treadmill for fishes. Um, she wrote and published a paper as a lead author. She graduated from the College of Charleston about five years ago, uh, went down to University of Northern Florida to get a master's degree, worked for a biotech company for a couple of years. And right now she is at the University of Southern Florida getting her PhD looking at uh, genomics of corals and coral conservation. Over down here, we have uh, Meg Malone and Kelly Buck, which were two students that about seven years ago worked in my lab, uh, looking at diets and stomach contents from pelagic fishes in the Indian Ocean. Um, both of them helped write the paper. They were first and second author. Kelly Buck decided to abandon marine biology and she went to veterinary school and she's now working as a veterinarian in Ohio. And Meg Malone um, got a master's and, eventually, and recently just graduated with her PhD from the University of Chicago working on fish ecology and did her most of her field work over in Hawaii. 
Carolyn Habern over here was uh, a student that my first research student that worked in my lab and she worked on the looking at fish behavior and fish spawning. Um, she also abandoned marine biology and became a veterinarian, uh, worked as a veterinarian for a few years, and she's presently doing a um, master's in epidemiology, and she's uh, looking at um, how do different animals work as vector for viruses. And with the advent of COVID, she's going to have all the jobs in the world looking at how COVID jumps between humans and different wildlife. And finally, I'll pull down here uh, Alison Deary, who was an undergrad student that worked on the uh, oceanography and behavior of tropical tuna species. She graduated from the College of Charleston, went to the Virginia Institute of Marine Sciences, got a PhD, and is now a senior scientist in working for the National Marine Fisheries Service in Alaska. Actually, she's housed in Seattle, but she spends every summer working up in uh, Alaskan waters off of NOAA vessels all very successful uh, students that are exceeding in the marine sciences and biological world that greatly benefited from doing independent research in a lab and actually doing real research and publishing. Um, a lot of you might be interested in study abroad opportunities. Um, like most schools, we offer lots of um, study abroad opportunities uh, for many majors. The ones for marine biology, for example, that we're offering this summer, uh, we're offering coral reef biology in Bali in Indonesia by Phil Dustin, so this is a picture from previous years. We're offering a marine biology course, which has the option also to get a scuba certification in the British Virgin Islands in the Caribbean. And we also, our normal ecology course uh, is taught in the San Blas Islands in Panama and is taught by our marine biologists and basically a marine ecology course at that point. Um, these uh, offerings can change year to year. We've also offer marine biology courses that can take you to Spain or the Bahamas. But also the College of Charleston, we're well known for basically accepting credits from all other programs that offer experiential learning, which are, and especially those by organizations that really specialize in taking students in marine biology abroad. Um, two, for example, of the most prestigious programs that College of Charleston is affiliated with. This affiliation sometimes gives you a little discount, and what it guarantees is that the credits transfer seamlessly between C Education Association. I think they gave a presentation early on in this forum. Uh, they're the best organization that you could use to get a seagoing experience and see if you like working in a ship doing oceanography. And then also the School for Field Studies, which has multiple campuses around the world, but specifically they have one in the Caribbean and Turks and Caicos, which is a great stepping stone that a lot of our College of Chelsea students have taken advantage for pursuing and getting a direct experience in marine biology. But we accept credit transfers from um, many, many different organizations that specialize in these experiential learnings. What do the biology students do, undergraduates do for fun? Well, we're on the coastline. Um, almost every single ocean going sports is very popular. We're a great surfing town. We have a club crew team that travels all around the nation to go crew. A lot of marine biologists uh, do this. Uh, Stand-up paddle boarding is probably this, among the best that you can do in this nation. There's lots of fishing going on. And we do have a very active club sport things, things to keep you entertained and happy uh, while at the College of Charleston. I should say that we're an urban campus and yes, we are party school, like all universities are. The difference is that we happen to be in a very vibrant, fun city where not only are there a lot of college students, there's also a lot of young adults that like to party. Um, we, the concept of block parties has become very popular and the college organizes, I uh, lose track every single weekend, big gatherings for just doing fun, et cetera. Here we have a picture of the president of College of Charleston, President Shu, with a whole bunch of students at uh, the bowling alley that we have next to campus. So it's a very fun city to be uh, a student today. Um, we are one of the oldest institutions, uh, teaching institutions in the United States. Um, this is a picture of when we were a small municipal women's only university and they had a traditional graduation with white dresses. Well, today we maintain that uh, tradition. Even though we're a much larger public institution, we still have that uh, women get to wear a white dress and men get to wear a white tuxedo doing a very traditional 
graduation party in May, when the weather, I should say, is fabulous. We also have Division I uh, athletic school. If you are serious about your athletics, we offer most uh, athletic programs and most sports that you can have, except football. It's a very oddity here in the Southeast. But we have many marine biology students that are uh, Division I athletes too. I should highlight that specifically our sailing team is among the best there are in the United States, and we regularly win the NCAA title for sailing. A lot of our top athletes are biology majors, and this is just came by a month ago of the best academic students for all the sports and of all the sports in College of Charleston. We had four students that were biology majors, a volleyball player, the men's soccer, women's cross country and track, and women's golf. We had uh, the best GPAs. So it's perfectly possible to be a varsity athlete and also be a successful marine biology major. What do you do um, after graduation? Well, the usual things. Um, a lot of our students go to graduate school to get masters or PhD. So a lot of them enter and work for the federal government for NOAA, EPA, C grant. A lot of them work for state departments of natural resources. A lot of them decide to join uh, non-governmental organizations and work in conservation, environmental work. Students go into environmental education. Many of them end up working for aquariums and zoos. Uh, some of our students start private businesses related to marine biology. And I will say that also a lot of marine biologists, because they're getting a very solid degree in biology, end up doing non-marine biology schools and go to law school to do environmental law. Some of them have gone to medical school successfully, dentistry school, pharmacy school, nursing school, veterinary school. We get a lot of marine biologists that end up doing physician's assistant and sometimes pursue careers that are more economically rewarding than marine biology. I'll give you two examples of two graduate students that graduated two years ago. This is Brittany on the left and James on the right. Interestingly, they both came here in the same class. They both came from Lexington, Kentucky. And they did not know each other. Um, they graduated in the middle of COVID and the job market was really depressed, but uh, Brittany got a job as a fisheries observer up in Alaska. You can see the sea line here in her vessel and spent the whole year living in Alaska working as a fisher observer, while James Strange became a commercial fisherman himself and worked in the Amy Marie, a local commercial fishing boat here. Brittany spent the whole year working in Alaska in isolation, tough conditions, but loved the experience, decided that she wanted to come back to the continental United States and landed a great job as a fisheries uh, technician with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources next to Kentucky, close to her family, which is something that she wanted to do. And she's now considering different opportunities to pursue in graduate school. James Strange, he worked as a, a commercial fisherman for a year. And you would have thought that he would have getting all the fishing out of his system, but turns out that he has been uh, obsessed with sports fishing. And he came from Kentucky, got into shark fishing, starting a fishing club in the College of Charleston that's still ongoing and taught many of our undergrad students how to catch sharks from the beach. A very popular thing to do here in Charleston. He ended up going last year to University of Miami to their master's program, and he's now doing an internship at the International Game Fish Association down in Fort Oregon. So two students that, even though they graduated in the middle of COVID, ended up pursuing and are pursuing very successful careers in marine biology. So just to wrap up, um, remind you that we are offering a bachelor in science in marine biology, but we are a very large uh, department in biology. We offer a bachelor in science in biology, bachelor of arts in biology, bachelor in science with a concentration in molecular biology, a teaching option, and a minor in biology. And all our majors are able to switch from these majors from one to the other one seamlessly. There's also a lot of interdisciplinary minors with liberal arts schools. So a lot of our students also get a minor in science and environmental sustainability studies, data science, archaeology, women's and gender studies, et cetera. Um, I put here as the last slide, a couple of my colleagues and a couple of websites where you can go and get more information. Tony Harold teaches fish biology and he manages our collection of um, a taxonomic collection of fishes. Heather Spalding uh, specializes in rebreathers and working in mesophotic algae on Hawaii. Bill Dustin works on coral reefs uh, all over the Caribbean and, and Indonesia. Jack Tatulio uh, is our phytoplankton oceanographer and has a long story of working in Antarctica. 
<clears throat> Andy uh, is our genomics specialist and works in genomics of all kinds of organisms. Heather Fullerton uh, is a microbiologist specializing in hydrothermal vents. And there's a picture of her going down in Alvin. Eric Sotka works all over the world doing different invasive species and population genetics of all kinds of invertebrates and many, many, many more scientists that are available to the undergraduates to collaborate with. And with that, uh, that's the end of my presentation. Um, I'll answer any questions now. I'll stop sharing and I'll be able to see your uh, faces and answer in the chat and the questions. All right, so doctor, uh, we won't be seeing uh, faces, but I have the questions here on this Q&A on the bottom. So I'll read you Perfect. it. So let uh, me, there you go. <laughs> First question from Mary Caitlin, she asks, do you offer dual degrees, not a double major? For example, a degree in marine biology and conservation or marine biology and aquaculture? So dual degree. Uh, no, we offer majors and minors and double majors. But our, our degree in marine biology, um, it does require a lot of work, but it does leave enough free time and not the open time to get definitely the minor, the major and the minor. Very are most common are major in marine biology with a minor in environmental studies. And also we our geology department is very marine oriented too. So we do get a lot of marine biology majors that also get a minor in geology and they take all the marine geology courses at the aqua. Right. And lately more we're getting more with minors in data science. A lot of computer modeling students interested in pursuing that. All right, and the next question is, uh, what kind of track do you offer for master's program? Do you offer a five-year, a fast-track master's program in marine biology? We are about to approve it. <laughs> We're literally about to approve a five-year fast-track through uh, to a master's student. Um, this will be limited to very only very top superb students. It's usually not usually not recommended that someone goes to a place and does both their undergrad and their graduate at the same place. But uh, we do understand that certain students uh, do have certain conditions and it's very appropriate for certain students that want to sometimes maybe save money or uh, don't want to leave Charleston when it comes down to grad school. So this would allow these top uh, end students. So we do not have it on the books yet, but I believe it is to be approved and voted on next year. So if you were to come next year, by the time you graduate in four years, that will be in the plan. All right. And our final question from Caitlin Clark is, um, Caitlin is an accepted student for fall of 2022. Uh, they're doing a tour April 15th and was wondering if they were able to tour the Marine Biology Center then. Um, we have a self-guided uh, tour of the Marine Biology thing, um, but uh, please email me directly. I'm the Marine Biology Advisor. So if you have any further questions, um, contact me and I'll, we can organize it for you to make it out here to the Marine Lab. And I can give you a tour of our facilities and talk to you more in detail about the program. Yes, so on Whova, on the app or the webpage, you'll see our speaker center. You'll see Dr. Gorka Sancho there and you'll be able to see their information and just contact them afterwards. All right, uh, anything else, doctor? If there's any, no more questions. Um, we are a great place. Um, there are many great places. And the one thing I tell my prospective students, if they're thinking, you got to figure out which university are you going to be happiest? Because the truth is that our top students love, are engaged, and really appreciate Charleston, and really hate leaving Charleston and they graduate if they have to leave. But figure out where are you going to be the happiest student possible, therefore be the best student that you can be. All right, excellent. All right, thank you again for your time. Excellent. Hopefully you guys will join us after lunch for our additional presentations, but it's um, time to go. Thank you again so much. That was an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you.